Hello everyone and welcome to Mtoto News Insight where we talk about children. The United Nations General Assembly that took place this September received two reports launched by the International Labour Organization that cautioned the world will not achieve the sustainable development goals of decent work and economic growth. The reports focused on modern slavery, forced labor, and forced marriage, mainly among children, women, and girls. Findings cited that 40 million people were victims of modern slavery in 2016, with 25 million in forced labor and 15 million in forced marriage. Whereas, the global estimates of child labor also found out that 152 million children between the ages of 5 and 17 were subjected to child labor, and there has been a decline in child labor over the past 16 years, and the pace has slowed down during 2012 to 2016. 90% of children in child labor live in Africa. The agricultural sector accounts for the largest concentration of child labor with 70.9% of the incidence of child labor, while more than two thirds of child labor takes place within the family unit. I think of the climate change, which is depleting and degrading the planet we leave to our children. And I think of the vast challenges that come from the mass displacement of people. Many are refugees fleeing conflict and persecution. Others are economic migrants, prepared to risk everything on perilous sea crossings in the desperate search for a better life for themselves and their children. Through this migration, we also see the challenges of economic inequality between countries and within them. This inequality, together with weaknesses in the global trading system, threatens to undermine support for the forces of liberalism and free trade that have done so much to propel global growth. And it is pushing some countries towards protectionism in the belief that this best defends the interests of their own people. The United Nations has helped advance toward these goals in so many ways, feeding the hungry, providing disaster relief, and empowering women and girls in many societies all across the world. Yet in recent years, the United Nations has not reached its full potential because of bureaucracy and mismanagement. While the United Nations on a regular budget has increased by 140 percent and its staff has more than doubled since 2000, we are not seeing the results in line with this investment. Bullying involves repeated harm to individuals or groups by another with unequal power. The dominant intends to harm the less dominant repeatedly. Children and parents need to be assured that the school conditions guarantee the safety and security of children. The well-being of the general community depends upon its young people. Several studies have been found that fear of being bullied when entering secondary school worries children more than anything else. Yet, in Kenya, researchers have concentrated in the area of discipline in general, but little is said about the problem of bullying. Bullying is a form of violence where the victim is unable to escape, especially in a system where schooling is compulsory and shifting schools or homeschooling become options that are hard to come by. Not to forget issues of access of these very schools. Over the years, disciplinary problems, low economic status, peer influence, lack of parental guidance, religious instructions, and shortage of schools and teachers have been considered factors that contribute to bullying in schools. And it is important to consider what action should be taken by relevant authorities to secure an orderly atmosphere that is needed in schools for effective learning. In Kenyan secondary schools, 61% of girls and 92% of boys admit that bullying occurs in their schools as opposed to 39% of girls and 8% of boys who said bullying wasn't a problem in their schools. This depicts bullying as a problem in secondary schools and has become accepted as a tradition once a student joins school. For self-identification, 20% of boys acted as bullies, while 7% were girls. 44% of boys were victims, whereas 48% were girls. However, it was noted that some girls fell victims of bullying from both boys and girls, and this contributed to 48% of victims, which is higher than that of the boys at 44% in mixed schools. Bullying of girls by boys affects girls' self-esteem and ability to learn. 
this situation is made worse by the fact that for girls who are victims, their parents and guardians are often cautious to speak out against it and in some cases, results to absenteeism, leading to early pregnancies and finally dropping out of school. In conclusion, different factors interact in influencing bullying in schools. Hence, emphasis should be put in the support of cohesion of staff and the head teachers to build a good climate in the school and frame rules and regulations specific to bullying in schools. When you say that you are not strong enough as an adult to act upon cases of violence against children, you are just saying that you have no concern for helping any child. But when it comes to the social service workforce, they are mindful about the idea that we should treat vulnerable population like we would want to be treated. The social service workforce is understood as a system of interventions, programs, and benefits provided by governmental, civil society, and community actors to address the welfare and protection of vulnerable populations, including children. To be a successful social worker, you need to speak positively with children and speak about what children can do to address acts of violence. How often do we sit around children discussing the damages done to them? Are this discussion making the children happier in any way at all? What are we really getting out of checking up on violence against children? There needs to be an affirmation to that we value child protection all the time. On 25th September 2015, the world agreed on the 17 Sustainable Development Goals for the people, planet and prosperity. The SDGs are the new universal set of goals, targets, and indicators that the United Nations member states are expected to use to frame their agendas and political policies over the years since 2015. The children also have something to celebrate as the SDGs have them in their mind. SDG number one says, no child should live in poverty. Number two states, no child should experience hunger. Number three states, every child is entitled to good health and well-being. Number four, no child should be discriminated because of gender. Children should have access to clean water and sanitation and others. To achieve all these goals for the child, we need all partners to participate and leave no one behind. Every child has a special place in our hearts. We need to take care of them. They are the leaders of today, not tomorrow. Follow us at Mtoto News on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I have been your host, Anlin Barbara. Have a good day.